that, I'm going to quickly sort of go over the overall block diagram of the chip, um, and then we'll start getting into the details of, of the architecture, and that's when we'll, we'll talk in, in more depth about, about what's going on in each individual piece. Um, this is just sort of pointing your, the chip at a high level. Uh, 512 cores. Uh, this is the this is similar to the block diagram you've probably seen before from the compute discussions. Of course, in that discussion, we, we weren't disclosing some of the secret sauce we had on the graphic side. So this is now the more uh, complete diagram of the architecture. Uh, so you see the, 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 the SM, each of these SMs is now significantly beefed up in the previous generation. Um, 32 cores per SM times 16, PS 512 total in the chip. Uh, the geometry units we'll talk about uh, in the next slide are, are the really the, the big new thing um, that, that, we, that we changed dramatically uh, in, in GF100, and, and again, we'll talk about that. Uh, the raster units, these new raster units also are, are related to this idea of enabling geometric realism that, that again, we'll talk about. Uh, 64 texture units, uh, one uh, four coupled to each SM, uh, 48 ROP units, and a 384-bit uh, media R5. Any questions on that high level before we jump in? Okay, Henry. Okay, so, so let me talk about, about geometric realism, what, what we mean by that. Um, if I if were to describe sort of the state of games today when we look at you know, a, lot of the, a lot of the content that's out there, uh, the, the pixels are, are very beautiful these days. A, a lot of what's been done from starting in DX9 and through the DX10 generation is extraordinary compute power and great programming flexibility to enable you to very meticulously uh, shade every, every, every pixel. Um, and, you know, I guess you see in this scene sort of like the, like her, her pants or something like that, the texture looks, looks rather realistic that, that matches kind of the jeans type texture. So that, that, that's been good, but the geometric side has really not made very much progress at all. And so you, we see these images that have this kind of very, this uh, bump match texture look that's been around for many years, and we're sort of getting tired of seeing it, because the more you look at it, the more you realize it's not really uh, realistically captured the image. It's, it's taking shortcuts that don't make it look realistic. And if we look at this picture here, just as some examples, um, if you look on the left, you see that her gun has these jaggies in it, right? Because there's not, a, there's not enough polygons here to represent the real shape of the gun. Her shoulder has a similar problem. Um, if you look at uh, her hair, right, she's wearing a hat because, you know, this hair is just really hard and so in games everybody's wearing helmets and hats and things like that. Um, if you look at this uh, shed in, in, this, in the side here, this is, trying to, uh, this is trying to represent a corrugated roof, but of course they can't afford the geometry to make a real corrugated roof, so they just have a flat roof and they sort of slap the texture on it to make it look as if it's corrugated. So th these are some examples of, sort of, the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the, the issues we see in games today that we wanted to solve with this idea of geometric realism. Um, so go to the next slide there. So one of the things that we often do in any architecture is we're always looking at film, right? Film is sort of the, the bleeding edge. Those are the guys that don't want to compromise in anything. And uh, looking at film is often an inspiration for the new GPU ideas that, that, that we're focusing on. Uh, you know, Toy Story many years ago was an inspiration for a lot of the work that we did in, in previous generations. Uh, and if, if we look at film, we see that, that geometric realism is, is a very serious thing in film. Right? They don't make these compromises. This fish guy on the right here, right? He's got every polygon dedicated to de you know, making those ugly spikes on him and those ugly warts all be all be real. The shadowing looks totally real. Um, in the film world, every pixel is beautifully shaded, but the geometric detail is also no, is also not compromised at all. Um, in film, how do they do that? Uh, they have they use tessellation and this, this idea of displacement mapping, which we'll talk about later. That's their standard to basically enable them to. Uh, very easily create extremely rich content that behaves very realistically as a, as a scene moves along. And although we're not quite at this point yet, this was kind of the, you know, this is the direction we wanted to go to, is, is to basically enable this kind of realism um, in, in the games that you play every day. So, Henry, go to the slide. So what, uh, what, what, are we, what do we do at a high level, and then I'll hand off to Henry to talk about, talk about the details of it. And also, I guess, setting up sort of what were some of the problems that, that we saw. So but before GF100, uh, if, if you look back, let's take from the DX9 generation today. We talk, I talked about this idea of shading performance. There's been incredible progress in shading performance, right? We estimate over 150x in shading performance that's been enabled from the start of DX9 just through GTX 285. 
So, and that's been applied towards these really beautifully shaded pixels. On the geometry side, the progress has been very mediocre, frankly. Right? There's less than a 3x improvement in the amount of geometry that you can put in a scene, the amount of triangles you can draw uh, it, it, through this time frame. So there's been this huge 50x, uh, or more than 50x gap that's been opened up in geometry because we haven't invested in this area. We're using the same fundamental architecture of geometry that we've used all the way back to the DX7 or earlier generation. And that's now creating this big problem that we saw uh, in terms of what we wanted to accomplish with GF100. I think, Jonah, that's yeah. true of all GPU yes. on the market. Yes, it's true of it. It's true of every GPU of the present day. Um, you know, some of us worked at SGI before we came here, and uh, SGI had the same bottlenecks. Some of these, bo these bottlenecks have basically existed since the, history, since the beginning of the history of, of, of graphics. And that was what we wanted to, to break this time, was break these bottlenecks that had never been broken before, before this, this generation. Now, a second problem which made us less, uh, it would have been less beneficial to break it until now, so you have to ask why now. Um, until DX11, there was also an API problem. That if you built a GPU that could handle extraordinary amounts of geometric realism, the, the problem is the API wasn't really there to support it. Uh, the APIs in DX9 and DX10 fundamentally were a model of every primitive you want to draw, the vertex starts out in the CPU and then the GPU just moves it around. You can't, on the GPU, create all, you know, all the geometric realism that, that, you, that you want to create. So that was the second problem that was, that was a barrier. Um, so DX11, which we had a great deal of investment in helping with, was fixing the API side problem. With DX11, you can now create all this geometry on the GPU. Uh, you don't have to worry about the bottleneck anymore of trying to ship you know, mass amounts of data from the CPU to the GPU. That just, was just impractical. Right? You couldn't draw millions of triangles in a, in a scene or, or in a second before because it would be totally impractical to have all that data sitting around copying it from the CPU over the bus to the GPU. And the CPU couldn't have handled uh, animating all of that geometry anyways. So DX11 is a wonderful API that really fixes this program model problem. Um, GF100 is the architecture that was built to, to, to really get the most out of this DX11 API. So we have a brand new geometry processing architecture. Uh, threw away years and years of a design we basically have been using for years and years, and it's the design that basically is very similar to every GPU that's ever been built before. Built a brand new architecture, and we built, delivered an 8x performance increase at the end of the day in terms of this geometry by uh, 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 horsepower, which is an extraordinary <coughs> step up in, in a single generation. So, with that, I want to hand off to, to, to Henry. Um, and Henry's going to go through a bit of sort of what is DX11 and what is tessellation, and then talk about our architecture.